Ladies and gentlemen, I would be very happy to be present and greet each of you personally at this meeting. Unfortunately, that is impossible. But our own splendid product makes it possible for me to be with you in every way but physically. And so I take this means of bringing you the message which I cannot deliver in person. First of all, it is a pleasure as well as a duty to express to you Victor's appreciation of your great share in the remarkably successful establishment of the new orthophonic line. 1926 and 1927 have been significant years for all of us. They marked the return of the talking machine business from a dormant to a decidedly lively, prosperous, and promising condition. I deliberately chose the word dormant rather than dead because I am convinced that the industry never was and never can be dead. The desire for music is as much a part of a civilized human being as the desire for shelter and clothing. And it is more than a desire. It is a necessity to pleasant living. It is a part of human nature and will exist as long as human nature exists. That is why the future of permanently recorded entertainment, reproduced at will through a medium which approaches perfection, is assured. That is to say, the future success of the orthophonic Victrola and Victor Records is a certainty. There is another reason for the certainty of success for the Victor goods you sell. Music is a part of home, an essential part, and home regardless of changing modes of living, occupies first place in everyone's heart. To make it as attractive and comfortable as possible is a natural instinct. Nothing, we believe, ministers to the comfort and charm of home as much as great music. And your Victor products, the most versatile and highly developed source of musical entertainment ever produced, make great music available in the humblest home. It does not follow, however, that the Victrola and Victor records will automatically establish themselves in the homes of America. They are subject to pressing competition from many directions. And this competition, by aggressive and powerful sales effort, can quite frequently distract attention from the need for the Victrola unless by, met by equally aggressive action on your part. The automobile, the electric refrigerator, and many similar goods are your competitors. You must recognize this broad field of competition and go after business with the same vigor your neighbor merchant exhibits if you would get your share of the public's buying power. Last year, the public spent more than $100 million for our product. There is every reason to believe that 1928 will surpass last year. The country is prosperous. The public is receptive. Our records and instruments reflect the best modern taste and every modern requirement. Every resource is being employed to make them constantly better. Sales, advertising, and production programs have been adjusted to keep pace with the growing demand for and increasing saleability of Victor products. Every Victor dealer can go into this year with the confidence that there is tremendous business to be had. But to get it, he must always keep in mind the absolute necessity for more aggressive selling and merchandising methods. This selling and these methods must be based on thorough understanding of our product and our plan. It is my hope that this meeting will be productive of that understanding and that it will be the starting point from which each one of you will date a new era of prosperous victory business. I thank you.